Thank you for listening in to today's broadcast. I'm Linda Johnson. Now let's see what the Lord is saying to a people all by his spirit. In the book of Ruth, Naomi became discouraged. And in so doing, she spoke and she declared this. The hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Beloved, have you ever felt like Naomi? So much so that she said to the women of her town, Look, don't even call me Naomi anymore. Naomi means pleasant. She said, Going forward, call me Mara, which means bitter, because the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. But beloved, little did she know that God had a plan for her very life. As of today, you have a hyphen after your date of birth, meaning God's plan for your life is still in process. In Ruth chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, the Bible says this, In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem and Judah together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech. His wife's name was Naomi. And the names of the two sons were Malon and Kilian. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem, Judah. They went to Moab and they lived there. Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died while they were there in Moab. And she was left with her two sons. Naomi's sons married Moabite women, one named Oprah and the other named Ruth. After they had lived there for about 10 years, both Malon and Kilian, her sons, also died. And Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. Beloved, just let this sink in. Not only has Naomi's husband died, now she's lost her two sons. This is a bleak and pitiful state, which would cause anyone to become downcast and discouraged. Beloved, as you face hard times and difficulties, storms, death, and turbulence, you can become blinded as Naomi was. Naomi was clueless that God had a plan despite her great loss, her grief, her pain, and her circumstance. Not only did God have a plan for her life, but he had a grand plan. Thank God he didn't leave her stuck in that type of a situation. It wasn't the will of the Lord to end her life and her story like that. Beloved, let me remind you, you're living in the now with that hyphen, meaning there is more to come. It's in process. God is not done. The only one who can get in the way and to foil his purposes for your life is you, not the devil, but you. Sometimes, beloved, we need to get out of our own way. Beloved, oftentimes we're dealing with the temporary. Don't allow the devil because he'll do it if you let him. Don't allow him to get you to thinking that God doesn't care about you. Don't believe that in your heart. God doesn't see you, nor will he help you. It's a lie from the pit of hell. And you think that way because you, you've been in your situation a long time. Some people are saying to themselves, I'm never going to get out of this low-paying job. I've been here for years. And other people are saying, we've been, me and my spouse been married for years. And we've yet to have our baby we have been believing for. Others are saying, I've been waiting on my healing a long time. And you have just uh, began to accept your situation, whatever it is. In the book of Ruth, verses 6 through 7, 
It reads as follows. Then Naomi arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab. You have to remember now she lost her husband. She had lost her, her sons and it's just her and her daughters-in-law. She had heard in the country in Moab when she was there how the Lord had visited his people and giving them bread. Wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was, which was Moab, and they went on their way to return to the land of Judah. Orpah, at the encouragement of Ruth, went back to her gods and her land, but Ruth clung to her mother-in-law, traveling with her to Judah. When they arrived in Bethlehem, Boaz, a wealthy and a man of influence, showed great kindness to Ruth, whom he noticed working in his field. God would ultimately use Boaz, a relative or kinsman redeemer, as a key tool and a channel of blessing on behalf of Naomi and Ruth. Beloved, you never know what and who God is strategically placed in front of you to use and to manifest his purposes as it relates to your life. Beloved, you can't discount anything or anyone. In chapter 3 of Ruth, Naomi determines that Ruth should have a husband. And as it turns out, and in God's providence, that Boaz would end up marrying Ruth. Oh, behold, I tell you, God had a grand plan. And beloved, God has a grand plan as it relates to your life. I want to remind you that it's just in process. In chapter 4, verses 14 through 17 of the book of Ruth, the Lord blessed their union, the word of the Lord says, and Ruth became pregnant. And the women said unto Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, which has not left you this day without a kinsman, that his name may be famous in Israel. And he shall be unto thee a restorer of life and a nourisher of thine own age. For thy daughter-in-law, which loves thee, which is better than thee, than seven sons hath borne him. And Naomi, the word of the Lord says, took the child, and she laid the child in her bosom, and she nursed it. And the women, her neighbors, gave the child a name, the word of the Lord says. They said, there is a son born to Naomi. Glory, hallelujah. And they called his name Obed. Oh, he's the father of Jesse, who is the father of David, who became the king. Oh, I tell you, behold, God had a grand plan. Beloved, put your faith back in God. I want you to see and view God as being very good. Those who are listening in up under the sound of my voice, and you have lost hope, as Naomi did. She thought she was stuck in her situation. She didn't see a way out. Oh, glory, hallelujah. But as we know, God had a grand plan. He didn't leave her like that. If you have lost hope, I want you to just repent. Wipe your tears Brush yourself off, and beloved, by all means, get up. I want to encourage you to pray for divine help. Talk to the Lord. Have a talk with Jesus, as the song says. Have a little talk with Jesus. Ask him to give you divine strength to restore your hope to give you divine courage. Trust, beloved, that God sees you and that with him, you have to know that you know that you know, regardless of how bleak your situation looks. 
I tell you, Naomi had a bleak situation going on there. But beloved, all things and anything is possible with God. Without further delay, start back to studying your word. Get back into the Bible. I want you to become diligent and faithful to the things of God. Seek out a church home where leaders can encourage you. The church members can embrace you and that they can help build up your faith. I want you to know this. God loves you. God sees you. God does have a wonderful plan for your life. You just have to believe it. Thank you for listening. Now may you allow the Holy Ghost to do a work in your heart and in your life as a result of the intake of the word. This mission is accessible online at the ministry of LLJohnson.org or by email at Linda L. Johnson 06 at AOL.com. If I can offer you prayer or resources on how you may remain steady in your walk with God.